Javier Becerra, Chairman of the House Democratic Caucus, joined by our House leadership, our leader, Nancy Pelosi, our whip, Steny Hoyer, our assistant leader, Jim Clyburn, and I believe our Vice Chairman, Mr. Crowley, is uh, unable to attend. Um, we just completed a very good meeting, very, very good meeting, extremely well attended meeting of members in the House Democratic Caucus discussing with the administration how we move forward to continue to improve our health security law. And uh, we were pleased to have several representatives from the administration uh, further outline what the president uh, announced to the American public earlier today on how we will move forward to make sure people can hold on to their insurance and people can continue to secure good quality health insurance through the marketplaces as well. The good news, there are some 500,000 Americans today who will have health insurance that gives them access to doctors and hospitals, that helps them have the relief of knowing their children can go visit a physician when they get sick, which they didn't have before the Affordable Care, uh, the Affordable Care Act became law. 500,000 people. Among those, someone I like to mention, Andrew Stryker, who I hope I get to meet because I mention him all the time. He's from Los Angeles. Gentleman who was frustrated, spent some three hours trying to navigate the websites in California. It's Covered California website. And he was not pleased that he had to wait three hours. But after three hours, he found that he ended up saving $6,000. And so while no one should have to wait three hours, to find out if they're going to be able to qualify for quality, affordable health care, everyone wants to save $6,000. And that's why we're here. We want Americans to save money on health insurance. More importantly, we want the millions of Americans who could never say they could afford uh, to buy health insurance, let alone save money, have access to those doctors and those hospitals that are so important for their children and for themselves. And so we're here to say that we will do everything we can to make our health security law work and work well. And when there is op there's an opportunity to improve it, we will work with the President and with our colleagues in Congress to make that happen. On the other hand, uh, we understand that uh, Speaker Boehner today announced that uh, the bill that the House Republican majority will put on the floor of the House tomorrow isn't for the purposes of, of improving the new health security law, isn't for the purpose of trying to help Americans who are trying to secure health insurance through the new marketplaces. It's for the purpose of moving towards, once again, repealing the Affordable Care Act. So this will be, what, the 46th time that Republicans have tried to repeal all or part of the health security law that Americans now can count on so they won't be discriminated against for pre-existing conditions, to make sure that their children, if they're under 26, can stay on their health insurance policy, to make sure that uh, seniors continue to watch as that donut hole for payment of their prescription drugs evaporates to zero so they don't have to pay so much out of pocket. That's what we want to do. We want to continue to see health insurance coverage improve for Americans, and that's why we're pleased that we can join with the President to say that we're ready to improve on the Affordable Care Act and make it possible for more than 500,000 people to become insured Americans, but for all those millions of Americans who've been navigating the website to have that chance as well. And with that, let me now ask our leader, Nancy Pelosi, for her comments. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. I'm pleased to join you, uh, Whit Poyer and uh, leader, leader Clyburn, and as well as all of our members in a very important meeting that we had today. I commend you for how well you uh, channeled all of that beautiful energy uh, into a spirit uh, that is positive, that is unified, that will take us to the floor tomorrow, but more important than that, uh, to take us on our way to the full implementation of the Affordable Care Act. When we talk about it, it's really hard to resist when we're talking about quantifying the numbers that are signed up. A half a million people now, as you said, uh, have access as, as of the numbers that were released, but there are more since the end of October. Even in California, our numbers have practically doubled from October to the first two weeks 
of November. Uh, but nonetheless, to think also in terms of the over 3 million young people who can stay on their parents' uh, policy until they're 26 years old. Do the 100% of America's little children who no longer have to be discriminated against because of a pre-existing medical condition uh, to the high-risk pools that have given afforded people the opportunity uh, with uh, illness but without resources uh, to access to care to the seniors who benefited from the wellness, uh, free wellness, no copay, no deductible uh, 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 implementation that's already in effect, as well as lowering the cost of pre prescription drugs and lengthening the the uh, stability uh, of Medicare. So, so much. You know, what, where are we in terms of a bill passed? It was held. It's constitutional. It's, was upheld by the court. The implementation has rolled out over a year to help the American people in many ways already. And now, despite the glitches, still half a million people on. And by the way, a million point one, one point one million more people eligible have uh, uh, logged in, have, have, uh, are eligible to go to the next step. So we expect uh, that as was the experience in Massachusetts, after the initial rollout, then there was an acceleration to it. So it's pretty exciting. By, I think that I can almost unanimously say that our members were very pleased uh, with the president's uh, statement today uh, that he would do what it, he could do administratively uh, on this, uh, to have the delay, uh, to uh, encourage the insurance companies to make sure people know uh, what their rights are in terms of uh, going to an exchange, and, and you know his provision, so I, I won't visit it except to say that it was positively received uh, by our colleagues. We're in the process of putting together our uh, motion to recommit our legislative opportunity as, as a minority uh, for tomorrow, and you'll be hearing more about that tomorrow. And it is not in any way, it is complementary uh, uh, to what the president has done. Uh, so I thank the administration for their availability on any and all occasions uh, to come and spell out uh, uh, specifically what the opportunities are uh, and for some of our members to spell out clearly what the problems are uh, with the Upton Bill, which is the bill of the hour coming up tomorrow. But the fact is, for all the fuss and all the muss that everybody said about how the, the Upton Bill was going to protect all these people, it does not mandate that insurance companies must keep those people in their insurance policy. So it, 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 it is only a masquerade, a Trojan horse coming in to undermine the Affordable Care Act by expanding the pools and other nefarious actions contain, uh, provisions contained therein. So I, I'm very pleased uh, with the, the uh, uh, combination of meetings we've been having both as a caucus or an individual meetings in the course of the past couple of days. And I think that um, it has brought us together and uh, will take us forward for the full implementation of the Affordable Care Act. And with that, I'm pleased to yield to the distinguished uh, House Democratic Whip, Mr. Hoyer. Thank you very much, Madam Leader, and uh, uh, Chairman Becerra, thank you. Jim Clyburn, our Assistant Leader. Uh, first, let me say, uh, the Democratic Caucus is uh, almost unanimous uh, on the belief that the Affordable Care Act is good for our country, good for our people, that it will make uh, affordable quality health care available to all Americans. Uh, that is the substance of what we're talking about. Uh, it's the substance of what we're talking about, and we have not changed the message, either from our party's perspective, where we think the Affordable Care Act uh, will make health care available to all Americans, and have all Americans participate uh, to the extent that they can in paying for that health care, which we think is fair to all Americans. Uh, the message has not changed on our side, nor has it changed on the other side of the aisle. It's repeal the Affordable Care Act. This is just another in that effort uh, to do so. Uh, we believe the President has taken positive steps uh, to make it very clear uh, that people who had a policy can continue that policy for another year uh, while uh, figuring out what alternatives are available to them. Uh, it also uh, bears repeating that some uh, 83 percent of the people who are in the individual marketplace uh, have changed their policies on a regular basis. This is not something that's unusual and not something that was caused by the Affordable Care Act. 
to the extent uh, that policies uh, were canceled because they did not meet the requirements of the Affordable Care Act, uh, the president has now said, we're going to give you another year to look at alternatives. We think that's a good step forward, and we may well have an alternative of our own uh, tomorrow. But the bottom line is this. The Affordable Care Act, uh, passed by the Congress of the United States, signed by the President of the United States, held, as the leader pointed out, to be constitutional by the Supreme Court of the United States, is working for millions and millions of people right now and will work for millions and millions of more people who will have the security of having insurance and the availability of affordable health care. Uh, so that uh, we're going to continue this fight uh, for the American people. And i now like to yield to my friend, the assistant leader, Jim Clyburn of South Carolina. Thank you very much, Rep. Hoyer, and Madam Leader, Mr. Chairman. I, I often think of two experiences I had with the Affordable Care Act, uh, one coming several days before uh, March 21st, 2010, when we passed the bill, and the other coming several hours afterwards. Several days before we passed the bill, I was doing a call-in radio program, and while we were answering questions from call-ins, a gentleman called in uh, and chastised me pretty profusely uh, for uh, advocating the Affordable Care Act. He said he had a policy that he liked he didn't want me messing with his policy. He didn't want President Obama interfering with his policy. He liked his policy and didn't want us fooling with it. Well, I assured the gentleman that we had no intentions of fooling with his policy. Well, a few hours, a few minutes later, a young lady called in and she says, Congressman, I don't have a question, but I would like to say something to the gentleman who called in a few minutes ago. She says, I'm 48 years old. I went to work on the job when I was 22. I paid my premiums every week, every month on time. But several months ago, I was diagnosed with breast cancer. And when I went for my second treatment, I got a letter from my insurance company canceling my policy. She says, I want to say to that gentleman, I thought I liked what I had until I tried to use it. Now, what the president has said today allows people who think they like what they have to keep it. But it also says to the insurance companies, you must inform these people of what they have. And when you inform them of what they have, they may not like the policy that they have because they may not know what they don't have. And that's what this is all about. And I'll close with the lady who called me several hours after we passed the bill. She sent me an email, I'm sorry. She said to me, I stayed up late last night. If you remember, we passed this bill late one Sunday night. I stayed up late waiting for this bill to pass because I had not been able to sleep for several days. I had just, she said, gotten a letter from my insurance company telling me uh, that my policy was canceled, being canceled because uh, I have an eight-year-old daughter with cancer and we had used up all of our benefits for a lifetime. And I had been laying awake at night worried about what's going to happen to me or my husband if one of us were to get sick or one of my other children. That's what this law is all about. This is about providing affordable, quality health care for all Americans and doing so in such a way that they enter into these agreements with these insurance companies with their eyes wide open. And I would hope that we would come together as a country and begin to make this law work well for everybody. You don't do big things like this 
in one fell swoop. It's done incrementally. We have taken some significant first steps. I would hope that we work together uh, to get the country where it ought to be and get health care affordable for everybody. Thank you. Now you're back. We think our Democrats are going to be uh, uh, almost uh, a, a large part of them going to be against the Upton bill. Well, the president has made a very important administrative proposal, and that's what he can do administratively. We in the minority have very few parliamentary opportunities uh, to put on the floor uh, further uh, proposals which would require legislative, a legislative uh, uh, action. So we will have a motion to recommit, and we are in the process of uh, building consensus around it with our colleagues. And tomorrow, when we come to the floor, you will see what it is. Uh, but whether the president had done something or done nothing, we were going to use our congressional minority prerogative to make our voices heard on the floor uh, about uh, the access to quality health care. Well, I have not apologized uh, because uh, I think that all of us, when we were advocating for this legislation, we said time and time again that we wanted to get rid of discrimination against people with pre-existing conditions. We wanted to get rid of people having their policies canceled as soon as they got sick. We wanted to get rid of these annual limits, these lifetime limits. And all of us knew full well that all of our constituents were made aware of what's in the policies would determine that time whether they like what they wanted. And once they become aware, and if they like it, then keep it. But when they become aware of what they did not have, I don't think there's anything for us to apologize for. What we're doing is pressing issues that most people, and I'm one of them. I mean, I have three daughters. My first two I ended up paying for out of my pocket because I did not read the fine print. And I had changed jobs uh, in the middle of, uh, uh, of my wife's pregnancies, and they would not pay. Though both my jobs were at state jobs, they had a little thing in the fine print that says, when you change jobs, you have to be on the new job 10 months before we would pay uh, for, uh, uh, what you call it, maternity leave. I'm under the care. And I end up paying for it. Um, so just having a college degree ain't going to help you much. <laughs> can, I, can I just add, um, I've got a district that is extremely working class. I'm, average income in my district is probably in the low 30s. In a place like Los Angeles, that doesn't take you very far. If you look at the census data, you'll find that folks in my district probably hold down more jobs, work longer hours than most people in America they have to because they don't earn very much. Most of these folks are, unfortunately, among the uninsured. In fact, my congressional district of the 435 congressional, congressional districts in the nation is the second most uninsured when it comes to health care in the nation. So what do I hear from folks back home? I'm getting lots of thank yous, lots of thank yous. And as I mentioned, Andrew Stryker waited three hours to get his policy, but he's going to save $6,000 now. Same or better health care coverage, six thousand extra dollars in his pocket. I think all of us are hoping that that's the story of this new health security law. We've got to get past the glitches, and the administration has heard it from us any number of times, and they've they've said it themselves. We did not want to see these glitches, these bumps in the road with the website. But the important thing is not to repeal it because you had some glitches. It's to continue to improve it so you can have more stories about Andrew Stryker getting great health insurance and saving $6,000. Yes. Uh, 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 I think everyone wants to you know. <laughs> well, I, I just wanted to say, great first question. of all, you understand 
that if you had a policy on the day that this bill was adopted, you got to keep it. Now, you didn't get to keep it uh, if the insurance companies didn't want to offer it to you. We didn't say the insurance companies had to give you the policy. We said if you like it, you can keep it. But nobody had in mind that the insurance companies were going to be forced to offer people uh, insurance. They're not forced to offer people insurance right now. Uh, and so that uh, uh, the statement, if it was limited to the, the bill itself, was absolutely accurate. Now, the problem is people interpreted that, and frankly, we said it expansively. And as you may have heard me say in my press conference, we weren't as precise as we needed to be uh, on that issue. Now, what the president has done is said, look, we made that representation. Uh, we're going to try to keep that, uh, uh, keep that for the next year so that you can have some time to figure out what is in your best interest and your family's best interest. But as it related to the uh, uh, time that was being made when we were presenting the bill, uh, that, that statement was accurate. Uh, after the bill, uh, of course, the bill said you, needed to, you could have your policy, but at the, uh, at the end of this year, it had to comply with the requirements of the uh, Affordable Care Act. Why? So that uh, we would, in fact, share the risk and not have somebody have a policy uh, who, that was of such low incidence of uh, payment for health care that it would be passed along to the rest of us. That's the premise of insurance. You want to share the risk. The president was very gracious in taking responsibility and uh, making an apology. But I agree with Mr. Hoyer. What the president said in regard to the Affordable Care Act is absolutely so. There is nothing in the Affordable Care Act that said uh, that your insurance company should cancel you. That's not what the Affordable Care Act is about. It simply didn't happen. Did I ever tell my constituents of that uh, if they liked their plan, they could keep it? I would have if I had ever met anybody who liked his or her plan. But that was not my experience. That was not my experience, and it was not my experience. Um, as a mother of five, occasionally has a bad back and the rest of that, I was considered a poor risk even though I had some resources and uh, uh, thought I was quite strong for having five children. But the insurance company didn't see it that way. So I, I didn't run into many people who say I love my, my uh, health insurance policy. And if it is that they do because it's such a low premium and high deductible predicated on no incident of accident, illness, diagnosis, or anything within their own family, you know that something is down the road for them. And the fact of insurance is to spread the risk for those families as well. So f as far as the Affordable Care Act is concerned, what the president said was completely accurate I commend him for his graciousness for taking responsibility. Can I, can I, I just want to make a comment because I, I know exactly what the leader meant. But uh, let me tell you, uh, when members said that, there is nothing in this that mandates that any large corporation, which insures most people in America, uh, would stop their policies. Nothing. Zero. Nada. Uh, and uh, it was our expectation and hope that if General Motors or Microsoft or uh, uh, General Electric or whoever you work for had an insurance policy. There's nothing in this bill which says they need to cancel it uh, or stop it, uh, period. And that, that they're the overwhelming number of insured in this country, and that's certainly what all of us expected because I had some people come up to me who did like their policy, who were working for a corporation or a large, medium, or small that was giving them a good policy, and they liked it. And I was absolutely accurate and said, nothing in the bill is going to take this policy away from you. And that is accurate. It was accurate. Right. And it is accurate. Yes, uh, can you explain in greater detail the President's legal authority for this administrative <laughs> fix? You're saying enforcement discretion. Do you expect yes. private companies to offer plans that are illegal under the law because the President says he won't enforce it? I mean, do you think that's a good precedent to set going forward? I don't know what you're talking about. I'm not sure we understood the last The fact is that presidential prerogative to uh, in terms of enforcement is uh, not unprecedented. In fact, it's uh, um, precedented. <laughs> <laughs> it's precedent for it. <laughs> Jack. Uh, the other day, there was a pretty feisty uh, meeting with yeah. the officials who came up here yesterday. Mm. He said that things went very well today. Justin Jonas said when we asked him, 
things went great twice. What happened today? Did, did, did they hand up early Christmas gifts? I mean, what, <laughs> what changed the chocolate? The dark, dark chocolate. Listen, the, so I point you to the, the headline about where the Republicans want to take us. Every member who came yesterday to caucus to listen to the administration was anxious to know how do we move forward and make this better? And how do we continue to have a health security law that's working for everyone? And yesterday, we hadn't heard how the president was going to try to address the concerns that were being expressed by lots of Americans. Today, we did. And today, people got a further explanation in with some detail from the president's own representatives. And so when they walked out today, they got the answer to the question that they had asked yesterday. And once again, their question is not, will we repeal these new protections and rights that Americans have to ensure that they'll never go bankrupt if they have to take their child to the doctor? It's how do we make it better so folks like Andrew Stryker in Los Angeles, the gentleman I just mentioned, can continue to move forward to make sure he saves $6,000 on his health insurance. So I think a lot of members are pleased that we have a way to move forward to improve on the health security law, to make it better, and to know that Americans will continue to have or get affordable health insurance. Okay, thank you all. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay.